Hey guys, I want to show you guys my Chaos uh, Fairy Plant deck list. It's going to be a very unique one, so uh, it's a pretty unique deck, I, I would say, because it plays around a lot of different uh, engines in today's metagame. Uh, so the Chaos Plant version is going to be able to basically fend off against any of the targets in this format. So yeah, without further ado, I'm just going to show you guys the deck list. So uh, yeah, the, the the primary cards of this deck is going to be Lone Fire, uh, Dandy, and Titanial. Uh, I think this is a really good engine because uh, everything targets in this format uh, to a lot of degrees um, so the thing is um, a lot of times you want to be able to protect your recruiters in this deck and since you are kind of playing like a chaos variant of this deck uh, where you're playing recruiters uh, you're gonna need something to stop basically Kaius from resolving on your face down monsters or your recruiters and also dark end dragon so uh, titanium kind of fends that off uh, being a 2800 body is also really nice too because it's really hard to run over her uh, but yeah uh, pretty much it's really good uh, being able to summon titanium on the first turn and then on the following turn uh, summon a recruiter or set a recruiter uh, that's kind of the idea of this deck uh and it's really good the plant engine is really small so you can just uh, adapt it you can just play it really well with this uh, engine so you don't have to um, squeeze so many cards in the deck uh, i only play one dandelion just because uh, you don't need any more than one yeah it's also it's really good because sometimes uh if they attack into it and you get generate two tokens you can actually tribute summon for christia uh, in this deck so uh I, I like that about dandelion uh sometimes dandelion does have that ability to be able to use that ability uh to get the two tokens and tribute summon the next turn uh the other the cards I play is Mystic Tomato. I only play two. Uh, it is also a plant monster, so in conjunction with Lone Fire, if you already have Titanium in your, either in your hand or because it's on the field already, uh, Lone Fire can actually go into Mystic Tomato, and that's why I only play two because uh, Tomato is a dark target. But while it is a dark target, you can also get it off of Lone Fire. So Lone Fire, the third, the second Lone Fire acts as a third Mystic Tomato most of the time. If you go Lone Fire and then you keep one Lone Fire in your deck or you have one in your hand, the second Lone Fire becomes a Mystic Tomato uh, or t a Dandelion, depending on the situation. But yeah, uh, like like the last deck profile. If you guys haven't watched my Chaos uh, the Zombie deck profile uh, i love mystic tomato because you can just go into your uh, dark engine uh in zombies is really good because you go into goblin zombie so in this deck you're just going to go into sangan and plague uh, those are your two primary targets for this and also itself so tomato can go into tomato and then you can go into either a sangan or a uh, plague spreader zombie to do a synchro plays um Sangan is there because you can search your whole deck with your uh, sangan but you can also uh you can also make it so that if you tribute for a Caius, it's not a neg one as I explained in my previous deck profiles. Um, but yeah, that's really good about Sangan. Um, and then I have to play the Chaos Sorcerer because Chaos Sorcerer is like the best card ever. Uh, just because you could, it's a level 6 dark monster that can turn into a dark end with Plague Spreader Zombie. So you can just synchro summon with that and then send off something. Uh, I, I really love Chaos Sorcerer because main phase 2, uh, you can just special summon this and then do stuff. Um, and then uh, sometimes it's a body that you just slam on the board. A re uh, there's a reason why K uh, like Cyber Dragon is played in everybody's side deck is because it ignores the fact that you don't have to waste a normal summon. And this is the same theory. You can special summon this without worrying about committing a normal summon yet. And then you can just banish something right, uh, as priority to banish something face up on the field. So uh, I love Chaos Sorcerer for that reason. And then uh, a tech that I play in this deck is uh, Cactus Bouncer. Um, so I, in this original build, this I was playing a card called Violet Witch, which is a card that you can get off of Mystic Tomato. Uh, that card, if it's destroyed by battle, you can add a, a plant monster with 1500 or less defense. So you can play, you can search for Cactus Bouncer. Uh, doing that line where Tomato uh, goes into Violent Witch and the Violent Witch gets destroyed by battle, you can search for Cactus Bouncer. So for those of you guys who don't know what Cactus Bouncer does, it's a card that lets prevent special summoning. So it's kind of like a Fossil Dyna. The only stipulation is that you have to have another plant monster next to him in order to make this a Fossil Dyna. So it's like an 1800 uh, uh, attack Fossil Dyna. Uh, a, a little bit better than Fossil Dyna because of the stats, but, and, uh, but it's bad because uh, it doesn't have the flip effect of uh, Fossil Dyna. So uh, I kind of balance that out because because um, the, the ideal play is to go first turn Lone Fire, right, <clears throat> into Titanial. And then the very next turn, if they set like a Recruiter, you can summon the Cactus Bouncer and then destroy all the Recruiters. Uh, so you have two forms of like, you have a bit, you have two big bodies that they have to get rid of to in order for them to special summon. So that's kind of the idea behind Cactus Bouncer. The reason why I don't play Violent Witch is because one, I don't own it. But two, uh, oftentimes a Violet Witch ends up just being a monster that... Uh, I can't do anything with. It's a level four monster that's dark, so it's it plays harder into deck devastation virus, and I don't want to play it into harder to deck devastation virus, and so 
I do kind of want to play Violet Witch still, uh, just because I do want to search for this. But at the end of the day, uh, the Violet, if you're wasting a tomato line to go into the Violet Witch, um, and you're searching this, you pretty much lo lost your board control. And the whole point of uh, recruiters is to be out to be able to have board control. And so if you go into Sangan at the end of the chain, uh, it's better because then you can at least have a body to sacrifice. Whereas if you let the Violet Witch die, um, then you want that to die, and then you lose board control as a result. So um, I haven't really thought much into the theory behind Violet Witch yet because it's kind of a new card to me still. But in the end of the day, I think I still like Kaikus Master as a one-up just because you can just draw into it. Uh, uh, for those of you guys who also don't know, this card also cannot be special summoned, so you can't go Lone Fire into Cactus Bouncer, which is really unfortunate because this deck would be really good if you can just go into Cactus Bouncer. So uh, that's why I only I only play one. If I see it, I can just use it to like lock out special summon, much like a side deck. If you false, if you side deck Fossil Dina and you draw into it, it's doing a lot of work. Where whereas this deck, if you draw into it, is the same kind of concept. If you draw into it, you can just summon it and then uh, do damage. Uh, you can do a lot of damage with it. Uh, it really works well with the uh, Dandelion too. So let's say you have these two out in the field and they uh, clear the Dandelion. Uh, you no longer have a plant monster face up on the field, so you can actually special summon two Dandelion tokens, and then this and two Dandelion tokens allows you to pretty much stall the turn uh, to basically uh, lock out special summoning. But yeah, that's the Chaos Plant line. Uh, let's go into the Fairy line. Uh, the Fairy line, I, I, def I definitely love the uh, Christia because uh, Christia is an amazing card in Edison because it locks out special summoning uh, and it also allows you to have a 2800 body that fetches either an Honest or a Herald of Orange Light. So uh, yeah, you already know what I play. <clears throat> Yeah, these cards are really necessary because a lot of matchups, especially Dragon Turbo, uh, Dragon Turbo relies on the debris play. So fairies naturally have an out towards that play because now they have to play around the, the fact that you have Herald. So they'll have to side deck cards like Prohibition to call uh, Herald Forge Light to stop the Herald of Orange Light. Um, but in this deck, uh, if in your sideboard, you, you can side DD Crow. So they you have to if they have the Prohibition, they have to play around the DD Crow and the Herald of Orange Light, and that acts as two forms of uh, defense against the, the Dragon Turbo deck. But in other instances, Herald of Orange Light does a lot of things. Um, it's it's able to interact on your opponent's turn, on your opponent's first turn. So Herald of Orange Light, if you're going game one against Hero Beat, and you don't know, you're going to playing against Hero Beat, uh, sometimes it's good to go Herald of Orange Light on the uh, Shadows so that they don't have any monsters for the following turn because oftentimes they have uh, their monsters starved. But if they have an alias, great. But at least you stop the Shadow Search, uh, which is really good. Um, but yeah, Her Herald of Orange Light has a lot of applications, as you can tell. Uh, the main, pr the, the most primary usage is to hit a Caius because uh, Caius often have to sacrifice a monster in order to summon Caius, and so that monster is often a neg one, and so you're actually just training two for two, where if you hit a Caius, uh, you can allow them to, you can destroy the Caius off the board, and then you, uh, you, t you basically, since they tribute a monster, it becomes a two for two. So that's the idea behind uh, Herald of Orange Light, and of course it's a tuner, so you can just Sanker Summon with Chaos Sorcerer, uh, you can make level six Sancros with Herald of Orange Light, uh, a lot of utilities for it. Um, the Cruda line, I do play two and two. Uh, why I play two and two is because I want to be able to uh, search for my other targets in this deck. I do play uh, these three targets to play off the uh, the Shiny Angel. So the Shiny Angel um, gets you either a DD Warrior Lady, a Cyber Valley, or this card. Uh, for those of you guys don't know, it's more for trying to Scorpion. It's a, it's a, the, the, mo the primary thing about this is a tuner. And then it become it becomes a level four tuner when it goes in defense position. So the idea is if they attack into your shiny angel and it's their last attack of the turn, you can bring out the Morphtronic scope in on it in attack position because it has to be in attack position. And on the next turn, you can put this in defense position. And it's a level four tuner, and then you can normal summon any level four. Uh, you play a lot because you're playing, um, yeah, you're playing a lot of level four recruiters, so you can summon a. A Nova Summoner, uh, Synchro Summon into this to make a level eight Synchro. Uh, you can make Colossal Fighter, you can make Stardust. Stardust is pretty good too. Uh, so, but the idea is if you have uh, four, if you have four fairies in the graveyard after you make a Synchro play, you can spell Summon Christia and then get off your. Uh, you can get your Recruiter or you can get an Honest, whatever you want. Uh, that's kind of the idea behind it, uh, behind more trying Scopin. Uh, you can also make Ancient Sacred Waver all randomly with this deck because. Um, Ancient Sacred Waver only cares if you, your tuner is a light monster. So uh, sometimes you want Ancient Sacred Waver because you can clear the, uh, you can end the game faster uh, because he gains attack equal to the difference in your opponent's light points if you're higher. So you want to be able to summon Ancient Sacred Waver, and if you can special summon Christy, even better because that can be OTK for a lot of the spell OTK for a lot of the time. So you can attack with Christy first. 
Uh, they can't drop Gores, Trag, or Battle Fader, so they'll take 2,800 life points, and the Ancient Sacred Raven gets really large as a result. Uh, it's at least 2,800 uh, larger, so that um, you can attack and then um, pretty much end the game. Uh, that could be a form of a TK, that's why I play the Scope in. Um, really set down card for fairies, pure fairies. Um, I don't know why they don't play this card. It's really good because you can just Synchro Summon into Ancient Sacred Wavern, or you can make a level 8 Synchro by putting it in defense mode. Uh, but maybe they, li they like their floater effects a lot more than just... Uh, than the scope in itself. Uh, I play the Cyber Valley just because in some, in some instances where your opponent has lethal on board, uh, this actually ends the lethal uh, by going into it from Shiny Angel. So I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know why I didn't see that line before in my Chaos Fairy uh, list with my zombie list, but I'm definitely not going to cut out uh, Cyber Valley anymore just because uh, it has that line to be able to end the battle phase. Uh, that's really useful. And then I played the Duty Warrior Lady. Uh, I thought about signing a second copy of Duty Warrior Lady because in matchups where they side up, uh, they side like Oppression. Uh, Duty Warrior Lady is really good in Oppression matchups because you can just uh, attack over their monster that's the biggest monster, such as Bryanac. Uh, you can just attack into Bryanac and banish it, and then now they're locked out of their Oppression. And I think your deck can play really well into Oppression because you do play the Recruiters. So you play the four Recruiters, and then the two uh, Mystic Tomatoes to uh, act as a recruiter as well. But yeah, that's the fairy lineup. Um, so it plays, I think it plays, how many monsters does it play? Uh, it plays, oh, I forgot, I played two Kai's. Uh, yeah, you have to play Kai's because it's the best card in the format. Uh, because it trades really well. But it also, um, uh, it's also a dark monster that you can banish a uh, dark monster and then they do a you can do a thousand damage. So you have to play Chaos. Uh, you have to play the Chaos engine with Caius because uh, it does that ability. It's also level 6 too. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it being level 6 is that, that people can brain control it and then summon their level 2 tuner and synchro with it, uh, especially with D.Va. Uh, you could just they can take it and then make a level eight synchro. But other than that, it's really good because uh, I do play another card in this deck that allows you to play this on your opponent's turn. Uh, yeah, so I'll just spoil it for you guys. It's ultimate offering. Um, <clears throat> I can't get enough of ultimate offering. Uh, I love ultimate offering. I, I I love that it's discovered in this format that you can just uh, tribute someone on your opponent's turn. But it also extends your play too. So. Uh, being able to, like I said before in my previous deck profiles, if you set a recruiter monster, say like you set a Nova Summoner, and then they Caius it, right? You could just pay 500 and then set another one. <laughs> That's what I like, really love about Ultimate Offering. But also, Ultimate Offering allows you to do uh, extension plays. So uh, if you want to make like uh, a Lone Fire play, you could. So you can go like uh, Summon Lone Fire, for example. Tribute it off for uh, Titanial, and if you have a second Lone Fire, you can tribute that off, and they make Dandelion. Uh, you can do that easily with Ultimate Offering, and that's why I like Ultimate Offering because you can do something like that. Uh, you can also Normal Summon Cactus Bouncer too, uh, on top of your Lone Fire play, uh, so you can lock out Special Summon on the same turn, which is really nuts to me because now you have a, a monster that could—it's uh, really beefy to run over, uh, and then you have something that can like stop Special Summoning. So I really like that aspect about that, and uh, yeah, Ultimate Offering is really good. It, it enables your combo plays. So if you're doing—if you want to do a Synchro play, uh, the sky's the limit with Ultimate Offering. Uh, you can do a lot of Synchro play, but yeah, you can distribute some for Caius on your opponent's turn. Uh, it's really good in that respect too, because sometimes they want to get rid of your monster. Uh, let's say that you have a Cactus Bouncer. Right, and you have a dandelion token. Uh, you could just tribute the dandelion token, and then uh, banish their, the card that was trying to run over the cactus bouncer, and then you can get two more tokens, so that special it stops them from special summoning. Right, and you have two more tokens, so that's kind of the idea behind the cactus bouncer, uh, and also the ultimate offering uh, is that you can do something like that, something ignorant like that. But yeah, that's the monster lineup. Uh, I already I already talked about the monster lineup. Uh, so I'll, <laughs> on top of that, I play the actual traps. Uh, to combo well with the ultimate offering, uh, you want to be able to dust tornado on the end phase and then set the ultimate offering so it's safe from uh, heavy storm and stuff. Um, you don't want to get you don't want to lose your ultimate offering because uh, it's the card that like enables a lot of OTKs and combo plays. So that's why I played the dust tornado. To bottomless, you have to play bottomless in this format because black wings. Uh, it's also really good against Caius too. So if they try to Caius your guy, you can just bottomless it. Sometimes you want to keep your the Caius on board uh, if they. Do Kaisu and you do have the bottomless because uh, you do play the, the fairy line, right? So you want to be able to uh, crash all your recruiters into the the Kaius. Uh, granted, you are taking a thousand for every time you do that, but that's fine because sometimes it's better to have uh, uh, Christia than four thousand life points, <laughs> and I mean that. Um, so uh, and then you'll have the bottomless still set, so you can actually clear the monster with the DD Warrior Lady, or uh, you can synchro summon by uh, ending on a, a fairy. 
uh, you can do a lot of things. Um, but that's kind of the idea. Um, yeah, so uh, then you can also play the, the Call of Haunted and the Limited Reverse. Uh, Limited Reverse is cuttable, um, but the idea behind Limited Reverse is so you can do synchro plays. Uh, you can also do Lone Fire too, so if you have the Lone Fire, uh, where's it at? So if you have the Lone Fire, uh, you tribute this off and then you uh, get the Titanial. Uh, you can just flip Limit Reverse theoretically and then bring out the uh, second Lone Fire, and then, or sec you can bring out the Lone Fire from the Graveyard and tribute it for a uh, down line. So that's kind of the play I like in this deck just because you can stop targeting effects uh, and they can protect your trap cards, which is really nice. So you can have Ultimate Offering set and Limit Reverse, I guess, and then you can protect Ultimate Offering being MST'd or Caius or whatever. Uh, that's kind of the idea. Uh, Yes, install Titania as quickly as possible. Uh, and then I play Dushing and Mirror Force because Mirror Force is good. Uh, it's the best trap card, I think. It's one of the best trap cards in the game because if you have an established board, uh, you can Mirror Force their whole board. Uh, so this and Stardust is amazing because they're going to try to run over Stardust and you can just Mirror Force the monster because uh, they have to make something bigger than 25. And then Dushy because it's an ignorant card. Um, you can look at their hand and then stop. You basically know everything that's going to happen on the few, next few turns and yeah, just does shoot's good. Uh, it stops. You can have knowledge of whether they have gorge or not, or battle fader or trag, so you can OTK them. But yeah, uh, that's why I play tra trap does shoot. No need to explain more to that. Uh, where's my spells at? Okay, so the other spells I play is uh, Mark of the Rose. I do play a plant, so you definitely have to play that card because you can steal steal monsters. It's also you have, you play tuners in this deck, so you can just steal a monster and tune with it, or you can sacrifice for Caius. A lot, a lot of applications for Mark of the Rose, uh, and then Break Control and then Mind Control. So uh, this deck steals a lot, and there's a reason why it steals a lot because you can do a lot with the monster that you stole. Heavy Storm MST. Uh, not much to say. Uh, and then I play Pot of Avarice. Uh, Avarice is really good because you do play like. 20, what, 23 monsters in this deck? So because you play 23 monsters in this deck, and then you can actually go through all of them pretty quickly with Lone Fire. Uh, Lone Fire puts three monsters in the graveyard uh, if your Titanial gets uh, destroyed uh, or tributed. It, Titanial is never banished because you can just negate the Kai's effect. Uh, but I guess if they summon DD Warrior Lady and crash it and banish it, that's one way they can banish it. But for the most part, you're going to have three, at least three monsters in the graveyard. And if you Sangro Summon, you, have, you put two more. So that's kind of the idea. So I only play one because it's a really good top deck and you can recycle your Titanial. So you can just put back the Lone Fires in the Titanial and then summon Lone Fire and then do it all over again. I only play one because I don't want to clog with it. Uh, it's, it's a really good spell card in this particular deck. So you can just pop off. Uh, I only play six spells um, in my trap lineup. I think I already talked about my trial. Yep, that's all my traps. So that's the main deck. Uh, let's go into the uh, the extra deck. Extra deck, I play Stardust. A good card. Uh, I play Bryo. Uh, I play Dark End. And I play Colossal. And I also play Thought Ruler. Yeah. So those are my level 8s. Uh, except for Brian Eck. I don't know why that's there. Uh, Brian Eck's really good because you can just uh, do crazy things with Ultimate Offering with Brian Eck. You can put four fairies in the graveyard, especially summon Christia. Uh, it's just really good level 6 Synchro. There's no need to explain it. Goyo's really good because it's the biggest level 6 monster. Runs over Stardust. Steals a monster. Yeah, there's nothing else more to say. Um, play Army Arm. Uh, there's no need to play this guy at all. Uh, I mean, you can use it with Dandelion Tuck. It rarely comes up. But I guess I just have slots in my deck. You don't go into your extra deck very much. Uh, you don't go into your other extra deck monsters very much. That's what I meant to say. Best card, uh, Age of Sacred Waver. You can do this now because you play the uh, scope in, uh, being a level 3, and then you just have a light monster tuner. Uh, another effect I failed to mention is that if it gets destroyed by battle, you can spell summon this in the defense position, I think. Uh, and then you, uh, you can pay 1,000 to do that. Yeah. Uh, and then you can just wall up. Essentially, uh, he has a 2,000 defense monster, so he only loses attack if you have lower life points than your opponent. But if it's in defense position, it has 2,000 booty, so that's really nice about that. Uh, never use it because I never use that effect because uh, when I bring this guy out, I'm usually winning the game because um, I have higher life points than my opponent. Uh, play Urquazus because this deck doesn't pierce, and you want to have the ability to pierce. Uh, in a deck, so having the ability to pierce allows you to win against a lot of matchups uh, where you were losing, because 2100 attack and then attacking over a uh, dandelion token is 2100 defense, uh, 2100 damage. So uh, in some cases it can be lethal. So uh, uh, for all of my level six synchro decks going forward, if I have space for it, I'm gonna play Urquazes. Uh Black Rose because you can make it with uh, Morphtronic Scoping. Uh, I play Catastrophe because it's good. Uh, Ancient Sacred Wavern. 
or ancient fairy dragon because of uh, grave keepers. I never bring it out. Uh, you don't need to. Uh, and then Chimera Tech Fortress. The other two cards I, I don't really play. Uh, I never want to make a Red Dragon Archfiend because I want to have a monsters that don't attack, and Red Dragon Archfiend kind of conflicts with that. So you only play it if you're desperate. Uh, and then Mistworm, I don't really ever make Mistworm. It could be anything else. So these cards, it could be anything else. This could be anything else. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. You can play another second Chimeratic Fortress if you're afraid of Machines, which uh, which is actually a hard matchup. Uh, machines is actually a really hard matchup for this deck because uh, they, they plus all kinds, but it's mainly because of limiter removal. And uh, what's the other card? Smashing Ground. Uh, Smashing Ground is the bane of this deck because you want to end on a Titanial, and Smashing Ground doesn't target, so they'll just kill the Titanial. Uh, that's another bad part of the deck. Solidarity is another issue. So, uh, being a big monsters is kind of annoying. But yeah, uh, that's the extra deck. Let's go into the side deck. Side deck is very variable. I haven't developed a good side deck for this deck yet, but uh, th uh, there's theories behind all the cards I choose anyway, so there's that. I do play the Grand Mole because of the ultimate offering. You can do ignorant things on the battle phase. Uh, I do side Decree. Uh, I definitely think Decree is a staple in the side deck, just because there's a lot of trap decks running around, but uh, this and uh, Decree and Titanial is kind of like game because this and Stardust, this her and Stardust and Decree is like, it's it's usually game um, because you know they can't do much to your to your to your four to your board they can't mirror force but they also can't lightning vortex because you have Stardust like the board's good with Decree. Uh, I play pulling the rugs. Uh, you need it for Caius for frogs. Uh, you guys know how good pulling the rug is. Uh, Cyber Dragon because it's like the staple side deck. Deed Crow, uh, because you can search it with Sangan. So if you tribute summon a, for Caius or you synchro summon with the Sangan on the board, you can search for Deed Crow. Uh, whatever matchup is good for. Uh, I said a Gores. Uh, I don't main deck Gores because I do play Ultimate Offering, and uh, so if I think that uh, Ultimate Offering and if I think Ultimate Offering and Decree is really bad for the matchups, um, I would side deck a Gores into that matchup because it prevents me uh, from being OTK'd. But don't side this against a Dragon Turbo because they already know how to play around it with Kakimaru Drago. Uh, then you have Mind Crush because you can search, you can pretty much call uh, a lot of different cards nowadays in this format. Uh, as other people have said, such as I think Keegan or Fraser Smith said this, uh, there's a lot of cards that are kind of like uh, pretty predictable to play around. Uh, Miracle Fusion, uh, I guess, is one of those cards. So if you're afraid of Miracle Fusion, just call whatever you're afraid of and you just Mind Crush and then uh, they'll just discard everything. Uh, two uh, Vanity Fiend because uh, it's tribute some monster that you can. It's also a dark monster that locks out frogs. Uh, not much to say about that. Book of Moon and Consecrated Light uh, for Black Wings and for anything because if you place if you side a deck decree, your traps are dead. So you just need something for inter interruption. But yeah, that's the deck profile. I'm gonna have uh, some gameplay videos on my other video uh, on, a, on a different video. So if you guys want to watch that, uh, click on the link on the description or on the screen, and I'll take you to the gameplay video. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the deck profile. I really like this deck because it's Chaos Fairies, but it also plays the Plant Engine because uh, Mystic Tomato is a plant monster. So that's what I really liked about that. That's how I was able to segue into the Plant Engine. Uh, but yeah, uh, see you guys on the next video. Peace.